All right, guys. Um, it is currently five seventeen. Um, I am so tired. I've gotten zero sleep, and I have been having contractions since. Gosh, like all yesterday and they've been about like 10 to 15 minutes apart so not really close um like not close enough to go to the hospital um but now they're about seven minutes apart and definitely getting stronger i called um the hospital because some of them have been about like a minute longer than a minute and I just wanted to make sure that I was still good to early labor at home uh, and they just said that that's fine to try and wait until they're five minutes apart before going in because I have had a previous c-section and I'm trying for a v-back they recommend that I labor as much as I can at home at least until they're like five minutes apart because if I was to go in now then they would admit me and they don't want to admit me too early because they want to give me every possible chance of having a successful feedback so we're just waiting until they're about five minutes apart which hopefully soon because when I say that they're getting stronger they're getting stronger and it's painful. So, there's I'm just bouncing on my ball. Alex and the baby, my son, they're asleep. And so I'm just trying to I'm getting another one. So that one, I'm tracking them on my app. You can probably hear me a little bit better because the AC just turned off, but it knows I'm tracking them right now. And um, this one now was five minutes apart from my last one and it lasted about 54 seconds. So I'm just trying to stay on a consistent pattern here before going in, but I'm so Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be the labor and delivery story of baby Xavier here, which was about like a month ago. He will be one month next week on the 15th. So I'm just gonna get this story started. Um, I have some notes here on my phone. So if you see me looking at my phone, it's because I want to get my story straight. Um, for the most part, I kind of remember everything um totally different birth than my son it's my first son but really quick before i get into this labor and delivery story i just want to give a quick rundown and background from my son xander he is 22 months old and um his birth was completely opposite his birth 
really honestly made me not even want to ever do this again but here we are so with him I was 40 weeks I asked to get induced exactly at 40 weeks uh, just because they were telling me he was gonna be on the bigger side so I got induced um, I was not dilating we did absolutely everything that we could to dilate before starting on Pitocin um, and nothing everything was just progressing like really really slow and a long story short his heart rate kept dropping he was sunny side up and I ended up having a emergency c-section I was in there for two days before I had my c-section so it was a very long a very painful process I was fighting the epidural I didn't want it um, I finally got it and the furthest I dilated to was a six so um, that is the story it was very traumatic and I just never wanted to do it again but obviously ended up getting pregnant again and I knew this time around I wanted to do things differently and I wanted to try for a v-back so that's exactly what we did so now on to the birth story for this little guy here the clip that you've seen in the beginning of this video that was me in early labor that was Wednesday September 14th and that was really early in the morning I think it was at like I want to say I did that video about like 6 in the morning. Everything really started on Tuesday the 13th. So my due date was the 16th and as I was just getting closer to the due date, I was kind of like, okay, like, is he coming? Like, what's going on? Like, I thought I was for sure going to have him well before my due date, but obviously that <laughs> did not happen. So Tuesday the 13th, I started to get like contractions but they were really really far apart it wasn't anything like where i had to go to the hospital but they were there kind of just let that be it was really hard to sleep at night but um you know there wasn't much i could do i was drinking my raspberry tea leaf i was going on walks um and then on that night tuesday night we went on a walk and i decided to do some curb walking which is if which if you don't know what curb walking is it's pretty much um one foot like on the curb one foot on the ground and you're kind of like walking but like stepping if that makes sense so i decided to do some curb walking on our walk that night and we come back home and we get ready for bed and it's like midnight at this time when we're going to bed we kind of go to bed really late but it's like midnight and I just could not sleep and I had told Alex I'm having like my contractions are getting stronger but they're still far apart and I just couldn't sleep so I was like I'm gonna go out in the living room and I'm gonna bounce on my ball so I did that and I just still could not sleep I tried to lay down on the couch and I was just in so much pain they were definitely getting stronger and slowly closer together so I took a bath I think I like took like two baths I just sat in the bath to help like my back and the pain and then again trying to lay down and sleep and it was really hard and so in the clip that you've seen I was just bouncing on my ball um, I made raspberry tea leaf and I was just trying to do as much as I could like to keep my mind off of the contractions because they were starting to get really painful and I just wasn't sure like if I was even in like labor or not like I wasn't sure if I was like dilating like I was just in pain that's all I knew and I didn't want to wake up Alex or Xander because obviously it's like the middle of the night so I just did what I could out in the living room and I worked on my breathing and that helped a lot and just try to keep my mind off of the pain our really good friends were gonna watch Xander and I also didn't want to have to wake them up in the middle of the night like you know my water wasn't broken or anything like that so so like I said I was trying really hard to wait till the morning and finally at I think it was like 7 30 or 8 o'clock um, Alex and Xander woke up and I had told Alex you know what I think we're gonna have to go I was timing them on my app and they were not like four minutes apart yet but they were like 
pretty much scattered like some were four minutes some were five minutes some were six minutes apart like it wasn't consistent for an hour so i was just like i'm not sure if it's time to go but i want to go because i am in a lot of pain and i just want to be checked to see if i'm even dilated or just what's going on i make xander some breakfast really quick i just brush my hair and put it up i don't even like get ready i don't even care and then alex gets dressed really quick and he drops me off at the hospital um he did not stay with me because again we had xander and my friend was working at the time she works from home but I knew she was working, so I didn't want to interrupt them if we didn't have to. So he dropped me off. I told him I would just keep him updated because I knew it was going to be a while like in triage. And sure enough, it was. So we get there, and I have three women ahead of me checking in in triage. And I'm like, oh, great. Like, this is probably going to take forever. So I get checked in, and, you know, I pretty much tell them I'm having contractions. They're pretty close together, but they're just not consistent for an hour. But they're close together and they're definitely getting stronger so i go back in triage i change i you know get on the monitor and whatnot and she's like okay we're gonna monitor you for a little bit and then in about like an hour i'm gonna come in and check you and i was like okay and at this time it was like 10 o'clock like 10 10 15 is when i finally got back into triage so finally she comes in at around 11 i would say and she checks me and i'm like laying there and just praying like oh my gosh please let me even be dilated to one or two because again with xander i went and dilated at a zero like i wasn't even dilated and so this time around i was like gosh please just let me be dilated like don't let this pain be for nothing and i was dilated to a five and i was like what like when she said that i was dilated out of five i was like what the heck like i was shocked and so I texted Alex and I was like, it's time, it's happening, I'm going to be admitted and they're going to keep me, so let's get Xander situated. So he calls his parents, well we actually gave him a heads up before, but he calls his parents, tells them, yes, I'm going to be admitted, and they're like, alright, we'll be on our way, and it's about like a four hour drive. I let him know that I had to be in triage for a little bit because there was no rooms available at the time and even triage was pretty packed um it was a really busy day and so they pretty much told me i had to wait for a room i couldn't get the epidural or anything until i got a room but they did start me on like they did put like the IV in and stuff in triage uh so i was just pretty much waiting for a room and i told alex don't rush like you know it's not like i'm gonna have him like right now so so I'm just take his time with Xander, feed him some lunch and whatnot, and then go ahead and drop him off. Around 2 o'clock, I finally got a room, and Alex was already on his way. He was almost there, and I asked him if he could stop and get me some food. So when they came to get me from triage, they asked me what my pain uh, plan was, and I told him I definitely want the epidural. I'm not fighting at this time. Like, give it to me because I want to just be relaxed. And I also told them I did not want any Pitocin. I just kind of want to let my body do its thing. Um, but I knew that once I got the epidural, I could not eat. So I told them I just want to eat first before I get the epidural. And I told them that my husband was going to bring me food. Um, but they told me that they can give me some food. It'll probably be faster. That way I can get started on the fluids that I need before getting the epidural. So I just went ahead and took what they gave me. And they gave me a little like a sandwich box that had like a little sandwich some chips and some like applesauce or whatever so i took some bites of that and while i was eating that they started me on my fluids and everything kind of just happened really fast they started me on my fluids and i was ready to get the epidural and it so happened like perfect timing where alex had just got there and they were like all right we can give you your epidural now like you're ready and i'm like hell yes so i get my epidural i'm all relaxed i'm feeling good they check me around like 3.30 and I'm dilated at a 7. So, you know, from there it's just a waiting game. They said they'll come back in about 4 hours to check me again to see if I've dilated more and we'll keep going from there. Around 4.30 they came in and broke my water and again I just tried to go back to sleep and just relax as much as I could did ask if I could record like the birth and they did tell me like typically no um, but like once he's out 
I could start recording, but since it was just me and Alex, I didn't want to be like, oh, Alex, take out the camera, take out the camera, you know. Um, so, I, we just did not record the birth part. We just kind of kept it between us. We did, like, however, like, hit record on our phone and just put the phone down so we can at least hear his, like, first cry. But we didn't record, like, the whole, like, pushing and all that. So, I don't have any footage of that. And to me, that's okay because... You know, I was just, we were just in the moment. But anyways, they broke my water around 4.30. Um, again, waiting game, waiting game. They came in at about 6 and they checked me again. And I was at, and I was 8 centimeters dilated. So I was definitely dilating. Um, my contractions were really strong. They were all over the place. And they wanted them to be at a certain rate. So they were kind of just monitoring, like, my contractions. But... They were definitely there and they were strong and of course I did not feel anything because I had the epidural. So at 10 o'clock they came in again and I was really hoping he was going to be born Wednesday and everything was going to happen that day but they came in at 10 o'clock to check me again and I kind of just knew like alright he's not, he's probably not going to be born like today, he's probably going to be born like in the middle of the night. So they came in at 10 o'clock and checked me again and I was, and I was still at an 8. So the doctor came in and the doctor was like, do you want to start on a low dose of Pitocin, like a slow drip, um, just to help get things moving along because you're still at an 8 and, you know, it's been hours. And I started to get, sorry, I keep looking at the monitor here because I keep hearing things and thinking it's Xander, he's napping. But anyways, he's just like, um, you know, just to get things moving a little bit. And I knew I did not want Pitocin because I knew that having Pitocin can potentially, like, be a risk for his heart rate to drop and another risk for an emergency C-section. And I just did not want that. So I was kind of just, like, going back and forth. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, I want to move the process, like, get the process going. But I also don't want the Pitocin. So I was just like, you know what? If you think that the Pitocin will be a good thing, then okay. And they were like, you know, his heart rate has been fine. Everything has been fine. If we see it dropping or anything, we'll take you off of it. And I was like, okay, fine. So I agreed on the slow drip of Pitocin, which I never got, but we'll get there. At that same time when they were about to give me the Pitocin, the doctor had left and I had told the nurse that I'm starting to get filling all on my right side, I believe it was. But anyways, my epidural was starting to wear off and I was like, uh-uh, like, I need more. So they come in to give me more and then, you know, they just show me like the little button that I could push, um, like every, I forget what it is, like 15 or 30 minutes, whatever. So they give me more of the epidural and the nurse is like, you know what, I could tell that you really did not want the Pitocin and we don't want to make you feel like you are being pushed to do something that you don't want to do. So if you really don't want it, you don't have to have it. She's like, I think you're doing fine. Baby's doing fine. And I say we just don't do it. And I said, okay, that's fine. You know, like, I trust you guys. Um, my contractions were also right where they wanted them to be. So everything looked really good and she said by the way my contractions are looking it looks like things are just going to progress more faster on its own so like about like five for ten minutes or so after i got more of the epidural i started to get the shakes really really bad and if you guys know anything about the epidural shakes you know that it is horrible i was freezing i was shaking so 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 bad i could not stop like my teeth were like clattering because I was just like freezing and I was trying to make it stop and I couldn't and then I started to feel a little bit sick I was also really hungry because you know it has been hours and I was just like eating like jello or ice cream or like broth and I, that's not going to do much for me so I ended up throwing up and I still had the shakes but I was at least not feeling sick anymore I tried to relax as much as I could with these horrible shakes and I kept asking for blankets and more blankets and Alex gave me his blankets and I had like seven blankets on me and it was still bad like I was just trying to keep warm and I couldn't but they also had told me around that time that Xavier was sunny side up and I was like great like 
I know exactly how that goes. Like I'm going to start changing positions, doing different things, just trying to get him to move. And if he can't move, then I'll probably need to have a C-section. Like I was definitely stressing myself out, but they kept moving me in different positions and the nurse would come in every so often and start like massaging my side. Like she would like push my sides and like massage it in some kind of way. And she said that it's known to like help to get the baby to flip. So she kept doing that and then she would move me to my other side and massage my other side. She would do that a few times and then come back in, like I said, every so often and do it again. Around 11 o'clock the nurse came in to check my temperature. Uh, it's just like a routine thing that they do. So came in to check my temperature and I had a fever. And so that was just another thing thrown at me that I was like, great, like I don't know if I could do this. So she you know tells me I have a fever and I'm like well I don't feel like I have a fever like I don't feel hot like I feel fine but then again I had like seven blankets on me and she was like you know what we're gonna take some of these blankets off and I'm gonna check you again in 30 minutes and if you still have a fever then we're probably gonna have to start you on antibiotics because then it could go to the baby and not be good. At 11:30, the nurse came back in to check my temperature again and I still had a fever so she called the doctor in and just asked what we should do for the next step should we wait a little bit longer and check again or should we just start on antibiotics um to make sure like nothing goes to the baby or anything like that um i think it was like an infection or something like that that could happen so the doctor says let's check her before we go ahead and decide to do antibiotics just to see if she progressed any and see where we're at with that so he checks me and he says, oh, she's ready. And I was like, ready? Like thinking to myself, like, what do you mean ready? And he was like, she's ready to push. She's 10 centimeters dilated, 100% effaced, and he is no longer sunny side up. And I was like, what? Like all within a matter of like 30 minutes, everything went so quick. And I was like, wait, what? Like, hold on. Like. I'm ready to push like and I just started to feel like so many different emotions because I didn't have that experience with Xander like I never got to a 10 I never got to push or even try so I was like really nervous and I was like oh my god like this is happening and I kept thinking to myself okay so we got to a 10 we got as far as I'm ready to push like now the last thing I need to do is push this baby out because I still know that I could still have a possible chance of having a c-section so we get to pushing and I'm not in any pain I'm completely numb the only thing I do feel is like pressure and I can feel like a contraction coming but it's not painful if that makes sense like I know the contractions about to come like I'd say okay I'm gonna get another contraction like I'm about to get another one and they could see it on the monitor as well and they'd be like, okay yep like you know Go ahead and push which was good because i was able to push through contractions and like feel the contraction coming so i knew what to do so i pushed for about an hour and it was so i can't even explain like the experience like i would push and then we would like laugh and joke around like it wasn't like screaming or painful it was just so beautiful that's the only way I can explain it like so beautiful and so calm and so I push for an hour and out comes little Xavier he was seven pounds four ounces and 19 inches long um, it was such an amazing feeling uh, right when he came out and right when they put him on my chest like I immediately started crying and it was just I just don't have the words for it. It was so beautiful and I'm so happy that I got to have that successful me back and I'm so happy that Alex and I got to experience this together and just have that moment together and it was it was so good. So he came out, he did not cry right away, you know, it just kinda of took him a couple seconds or so, but and another big plus is I did not tear so I didn't need any stitches. It was like the most perfect labor and delivery like i could not have asked for a better birthing experience um 
and now I would do it over and over again the exact way. Uh, the hardest part of all of this was probably laboring at home because obviously I was in a lot of pain and I had no idea but now I know for the next time, you know, do it again, labor at home as long as I can and you know, just for a more successful rate, like everything went so good and he's healthy. We were there for a day, we went home. So he was born um, at 12.45 a.m. and we went home the next day on, on Friday, like around maybe like, I think it was like two or three in the afternoon we went home. But Xander got to come the next day and visit me and see the baby and it was just really nice. Um, I would do it over and over again but I'm so happy that he's here and I cannot believe he's already going to be one month next week. Um, the time has flown by so fast. He's a little bit cranky right now but I'll show you guys him. So this is little baby Xavier. He is the sweetest. He's so cute and he's starting to look more and more like his brother camera ended up dying I'm filming the end on my phone so if the quality is a little bit different um, sorry about that but like I said I am definitely gonna make another video and just talk about how motherhood has been and having two under two because it's definitely been different it's been a little hard if I'm being honest but I know it's gonna get better really soon um, and the days just go by so fast so I'm just trying to enjoy it as much as I can this first month has been rough. I've been trying to just get in the hang of things. That's why it took me a little bit to get this video out, but I finally got it out. It's not the best video, but I want to get it out for you guys. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're new here, I hope you consider subscribing and following along this new journey with us. And if you're not yet following me over on Instagram, go ahead and follow me. I'll leave it down in the description box. I post a lot more on there. And also, um, if you guys watch TikTok, um, I've been on TikTok quite a bit, just making little videos. And to me, I find that a little bit easier uh, to post on there more often. So go ahead and follow me over on there as well. I'll leave that linked down below for you guys also. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting along this journey so far and just being here from the beginning for those of you that have been here from the beginning and those of you that are new thank you for being here i will talk to you guys soon